Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of This Old Tech with me, Seth Macy. Today I'm turning my attention to an old friend, one who I spent a lot of time with back in high school. Of course I'm talking about my Super Nintendo Entertainment System. My particular console is looking a little uh, rough around the edges, but it's nothing I can't handle. And I invite you to watch along as I show you how to take a Super NES apart, clean out any crud, or in the case of my particular SNES, remove a coin one of my kids somehow inserted in there. I'll show you what tools I use and what tools you'll need to give your own SNES a spring cleaning, regardless of the season. This is a simple process anyone can handle. So let's get started. The Super NES released in North America on August 23rd, 1991. And for every Nintendo kid, it was the culmination of all our Nintendo dreams. There's no question now that Nintendo has really taken off and millions of fans are waiting for the next game that parents might be upset because the new game is going to cost twice as much. But nevertheless, there is still a real interest in Super Nintendo. This store, in fact, has a waiting list and they haven't even gotten the game in yet. More power, more colors, and more Mario than its predecessor, Nintendo's marketing wing had whipped us all into a Super Nintendo fervor. A bit more of what you want. It's 16 bit and it's yours only if you get new Super Nintendo. Now you're playing with power, super power. Through the dissemination of curated Nintendo propaganda, which the company called Nintendo Power. For a true 90s kid like myself, the time between its first announcement in Nintendo Power to getting my hands on it in 1991 seemed impossibly long. I wanted it more than I've ever wanted anything before or since. My brother and I toiled in the blueberry fields of Down East Maine to raise the necessary funds to buy our own. That is not a joke. A 12-year-old me and my 11-year-old brother spent the end of our summer of 1991 harvesting blueberries at $7 a bushel. It was worth it, obvs, plus free blueberries. On paper, the Super NES was superior to the Sega Genesis, the alternate 16-bit system Sega had released to get ahead of its rival. Nowadays, I think both systems are rad as hell, but in 1991, my hatred for all things Sega burned with the heat of a thousand stars. It was pretty dumb, but thankfully, we don't have console fanboys anymore. <laughs> Little joke there. Between its release and its final retirement in 1999, wait, what? That can't be right. Oh wow, okay, yeah, uh, 1999 is when they retired it. In the life of the Super NES, Nintendo sold 49.1 million consoles, making it the eighth best-selling Nintendo console, just ahead of the Nintendo 64. It also remains my all-time personal favorite Nintendo console of all time, always. Let's get mine back up to specs. Time to hit the bench! First things first, Gotta have that toothbrush. Just go get the cheapest one that they sell because you're gonna be using it to clean electronics. So who cares? Get a soft bristle one, by the way. Oh, that's nice. Next, take a toothpicks. Wood is softer than the ABS that the Super NES is made out of. So if you have to scrape along those little lines in there, you're gonna wanna use something softer or else you risk scratching it. You could use a piece of wire or like a metal hook or something but you really run the risk of scratching it and ruining it, and then you're gonna cry. And nobody likes a crybaby, I'm sorry. Isopropyl, rubbing alcohol. I'm gonna say go ahead and get yourself a magic eraser. I've already used this one, obviously, on another project, but these are great. Specialized tool right here. We have the driver that has this strange little funky head. You need this to take apart Nintendo consoles. You're also just gonna need a plain old Phillips head screwdriver pair of needle nose pliers. You could also use uh, like a sort of rugged pair of tweezers, but you want something with a, like a fine, fine nose like this. Also, you probably want to have some cotton swabs. These are really useful to have for cleaning out in the corners, reaching into things, just dunk them in your isopropyl. Also, they have a million other uses around the home, like baby care. You could just throw these at a baby and it'll be taken care of. That's pretty great. It'll save you so much money on babysitters. Note, please do not throw cotton swabs at a live baby, or any baby for that matter. All right, now that we've got all our tools assembled, I'm gonna move them out of the way, and we're gonna start taking apart the Super NES. I've had this one for 
God, like a decade. I don't remember where it came from. I do know this though. At some point in the last 10 years, my kids put a coin inside of there. I don't know why or how, but there's a coin in there. Uh, I wanna get that out because obviously a metal coin on uh, a piece of electrical equipment could be a problem. It could cause a short and it could ruin my Super Nintendo, which uh, I love. I love the Super Nintendo. My favorite console of all time. Let's get to taking it apart. Pretty simple. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and six of these funky little fellas right here. Cool. That's all there is there. Here's the expansion port that never got used. It's the reason we have a Sony PlayStation now though. Um, I'm sure you all know the story of that how Sony and Nintendo were working together on a CD-ROM attachment for the Nintendo, excuse me, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And that went to crap when they went with the Philips CDI deal. And there's the one prototype that I think sold at auction for like $350,000, like a holy grail. Like nobody thought they would ever actually see the thing. Okay, I'm gonna flip it up. Oh, I hear that coin bouncing around. Take off the top. Put that there for cleaning later. And what denomination coin are we looking at here? It is, oh, look at that. That's a quarter. It is, it's an Ohio quarter. Congratulations, Ohio, for, uh, for being the birthplace of aviation along with North Carolina for some reason. So there it is. I'm gonna save that for later. Buy some, buy a stick of bubble gum. The first thing we need to do is remove the ejection mechanism here. And this is where the needle nose pliers come in handy. Because we need to, oops, make sure you can see that. There's a little spring that holds it and lets it go back. And we just have to sort of move that out of the way just a little bit. Let's go ahead and, yeah, it's nothing to it. It's, it's quite simple, actually. We'll go. Lift this fella up, there. Pull that out, pull that out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put everything back so that I know where everything is. I'm gonna put that over here for now. Be done with it. Um, this, you just move right out and Pull that ribbon out gently. These are really annoying. I do not like this kind of ribbon cable because I'm always worried that it's gonna get broken. Um, so take that out. We'll just put that over here with the rest of the stuff. Now, the more fun begins. You have to pay attention to what screws go where. One thing I recommend is like draw a little diagram, just a general purpose diagram and just like either put the screws in the same place on your diagram or like tape them there. Um, that is gonna help you quite a bit when it comes time to put everything back together again. So let's take our power switch out. First we're gonna, actually I'm gonna unplug that easy enough. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I'm just offering suggestions to make things easier for you. Things that I've discovered along my, uh, my journeys of uh, attempting to not break things permanently when I've been tasked with fixing them. I am struggling to get this screw out of there. What I'm gonna do with these ones actually is I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start them back in place. And you actually need to take these screws out. They don't just hold down the RF shielding. Um, they also hold like the whole circuit board down, so. So that lifts out very easily. Look at that, Sony chip inside of a Nintendo system. Yep, there was gonna be a beautiful relationship there between them and, uh, and uh, it didn't. <laughs> 
didn't didn't end up that way. And now we have the PlayStation 5 as a direct competitor to the Super NES. Okay, so the circuit board looks pretty good. There's like a lot of um, flux. It's kind of ugly, but it's not hurting anything. It's just ugly. I'm kind of surprised to see all of that, but no worries. We're just gonna put this aside for now. And I'm going to say goodbye to my sweet kitty. I might keep one of these to try to clone him. But other than that, um, it's kind of gross. And I don't I don't like that at all. So I'm going to get this cleaned up. So that's, that's what we're going to do. So yeah, if you get a reputation and you live in a small town, if you get a reputation of like being the guy who likes video games, People just give you stuff. It's it's awesome. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to work around the sticker without accidentally removing it. It's the adhesive has also picked up a lot of dirt and kind of spread itself around, so it's pretty gross. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna accept that it's gonna look gross. Shout out to the magic eraser. This thing is quite magical. That looks good. I'm happy with it. Let's put that to the side. Let's give this ejection uh, handle. Nice, nice scrub, because that is super gross. No more gross kid booger stains on there. Uh, right in here, there are the two little tabs that were the region locking for the Super NES at the time. Uh, that kept you from being able to play Japanese games. Someone pretty early on figured that out and uh, discovered you could just you could just file them down. Yeah, we got some dirt dirt in there, some kitty kitty fur. Hey, you know what? I'm happy with how this has all turned out. Uh, everything inside looks good. There's nothing that needs to be repaired. I got that quarter out of there, so I think I think now. Now's the time to put things back together. Let's do it. I'll give this little power switch here a little once over. Nothing too terrible on there, just a little bit of fur. Nothing needs to be done to the um, to the guts of the Super Nintendo. Cool. Back in. Back back to your home. That's where you live. Very nice. Now, remember when I was like, oh, make sure you lay out all your screws in the right way. Uh, I did, and then I hit it and I forgot. So hopefully I'm putting these back in the right places. Uh, if not, you know, yell at me. Plug our power switch back in. It goes in in a very satisfying manner. It's also very easy to put back on because they have these two little, little knobby holes right there. I appreciate that. Okay, now we need to put the Controller ports back in with this ribbon cable here. Yeah, I don't like this rib, this kind of ribbon cable. I think I've said that. I think I said that when I took it apart. But it just it's very it's very easy to get it in the wrong way and do some damage. And I don't want to do that. So there we go. Success. Double the C. Double the S. That's how you get success. Okay, now the uh, kind of the most annoying part is getting the spring back on here uh, with this little metal piece. It's not the worst, most annoying thing. It's just kind of tricky. In some devices, but it's just a matter of, okay. Now I talked about how that was annoying and then I, I did it like first try, so that's, that's Good on me. Hey, great work, me. Also, fun project. Make yourself a little Morse code generator out of a, a Super NES. That's SOS. I don't I'm not in trouble. I don't know why I'm I don't know why I'm calling for help. Okay, let's do it. Close it up.
but I do have some, uh, some old computer stuff in here with a couple of these uh, lying inside just to prevent them from because as I've mentioned, I'm back in, turn it on and see how it works. See, now that wasn't so hard at all, was it? As long as you have the right tools and a desire to tinker, you can easily take your Super NES apart and restore it back to its original state, or at least something close to it. If you want to see me walk you through cleaning a Super NES cartridge, check out this old tech where I tackle the single grossest copy of Donkey Kong Country on any auction site. Or don't, I'm not your dad. Also, you can follow this old tech on Instagram now. Just type in this underscore old underscore tech and boom, get in on the ground floor. Until next time, I'm Seth Macy saying, insert marketable sign off here. See you later.